so I've got another unboxing video for you guys. Um, and before we get very far, I need to get rid of the zip tie. Hmm. All right, well, all right, there's a zip tie. It's just gonna have to stay there for the moment. So first up, we have a old photographic lens from eBay. Some sort of copy paper. Really? Did you think that was going to do anything cushioning wise? Whatever. And there we go. It's got a nice little ring on it. We'll go ahead and put that back. It's been inside for a couple days and it's hot it's hot and humid out and this is cold so it is almost immediately going to fog over just like it's doing. It is a little TV C mount lens. So we will set it there. And next we've got a an old industrial cable with a mil spec amphenol connector on it. Uh, it's an 18 position connector. With any luck, the connectors will be where I need them and I don't have to mess with it. Don't hold your breath. And next, we have an assortment of semi-rigid foam. And something I've wanted for a really, really long time. It is a high-speed camera. So no, I don't have the budget that the slow-mo guys have. I really wish I did, but I don't have 30 grand or 60 grand to spend on a camera. Hell, <clears throat> I don't even have 10 grand to spend on a camera. But I was able to pick up an old Red Lake Motion Extra HGLE. Now, this camera is capable of doing some pretty neat stuff. It is rated for 100 Gs of shock. Um, so when I started doing research on high-speed cameras, I realized that there were really two branches in the universe of high-speed cameras. One was on cinema and Hollywood, and that's where uh, Phantom and Vision Research tend to live. And then the other was on uh, motion studies. Kodak played a role there. They've got some antique equipment that uh, really hard to work with. Um, there's a reason they're no longer in that business. And you had Motion X or you had Red Lake. And Red Lake's been at this since it was film. And then they moved to proprietary PCI connectors and then this is a network enabled camera. And that was one of the reasons it was really attractive to me is it has an actual Hunter Base T network jack on it. Um, and uh, Anyway, so let's start with our first moment of truth. Let's see if this connector works. Because if it does, well, that's a happy thing. So it looks like the connector itself is a fit, but there's some kind of weird... There's some kind of weird connector actually on here. Let's see. So where is the key? So, the connector is similar, but not the same. And this may involve doing some surgery because, quite frankly, all we want is um, the, connect the power connection on this thing. So we might take this apart and modify it to get power to it. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. The good news is this seller has a money-back guarantee, so I think it's going to go back. Um, no harm, no foul. This is supposed to be a C-mount adapter. So let's see if... Oh shit, how do you get this part?
Uh, reasonable certain this is a lens cover. Got a beautiful little lens in there, or beautiful little connection. And yep, this lens is gonna fit. This little rubber thing seems to be pretty worthless. So it's a C mount lens. I, I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. One of the things I liked about um, it's a Panasonic TV lens, so one of the things I liked about Red Lake is they've been bought by IDT, and IDT still releases the software to run these cameras, um, runs on any PC. Makes it pretty friendly for an amateur like me. Um, so anyway, that is a start, and there's probably a dead battery in there, and there is a hexagonal quick release connector on the bottom here. Uh, we'll probably have to get rid of that, and we're going to have to crack this seal probably to, do, to get power to it. So sink in, trigger in, strobe out, reset and off, mode memory, and it's got a DCU uh, which is for a, con a computer to connect to. Looks like it's a, might be a network connector. And then this is your um, sink um, something in power. Anyway, it, the, the power comes in on three of these pins, and um, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to get creative, because I don't see a way to get this. Yeah, I don't see a way to make this mount. And that's really unfortunate. And it has to do with this bayonet connector on the end. Um, let me look at this one more time. Yeah, I'm going to have to email IDT and see if they have the pigtail connector for this. Um, but anyway, that is the project, and I wanted to unbox it here. Um, I'll create a vintage high-speed um, playlist for you guys to follow along. And I have some interesting things in mind, um, but uh, that's it for now. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and uh, let me know what your questions are in the comments.